out tubers. Hey, today I'd like to show you how to make your drill press variable speed and some neat little other touches too for not a whole lot of money. Well, let's start out with some basics here. Uh, you cannot make a single phase motor variable speed. The ones with the capacitor start on them. You have to have a three phase motor. Now also in regards to the motor, you want an 1800 RPM motor because your frequency drive can run up to 400 hertz uh, where you can spin that motor just crazy fast and uh, you're going to have your low end torque with the 1800 motor. The other thing I never knew is uh, this drive here actually goes from 110 single phase to 220 three phase out. I, I, I didn't know they had such a thing here a while back and is it sweet. You don't have to run 220 over to the drill press. Another thing I like about these drives, you can pull this front panel off and they sell an extension cord. And like on my mill and my lathe, you just can put this panel uh, out in front and keep the drive in behind the unit so you don't get chips in it. The nice thing about this variable speed drive setup, you can eliminate this center jack shaft. And then it's a 5-8 shaft motor, by the way, if you'd like to know that. Uh, the pulley, I cut it down in the lathe. I got it as small as I can. Uh, so then what I end up with is a 3 to 1 ratio onto the shaft that drives the chuck. Now on these drives, uh, all you got to do is you run your 110 into the top here. And you hook that in. And down to the bottom, you run your 3-phase out to your motor. They have a quick reference guide and uh, for wiring it and all of that. Don't be scared, the wiring is real easy. And for as far as setting the drive up, it's pretty much so a plug and play for a drill press. I just thought I'd show you this little book they include with it too. It's kind of sweet in case you want to freeze frame it and look at it. Now for as far as mounting your drive, on this I just got like a plate on here. And you're going to notice there ain't really room for a bolt head on these drives. So I used some Allen screws, 3 16 and got them in the top and the bottom here. They're kitty corner mounted. Now if we come around to the back, I like to use a hole that might already be existing on the drill press if you can. So you just make your brackets up and you can see where I welded them little L brackets on there and mount it up to the drill press. Quick and easy. Now the chuck that comes with these drill presses, uh, I couldn't even get a, uh, the drill bit to start straight. When you're running it, the drill bit's going like this when the chuck's going. So this chuck here is made in Germany. Uh, I got it from Enkel, and it's a real quick ratio chuck, keyless, and this is really sweet. And it wasn't a real lot of money either. And if you want to get a chuck for this, all you got to do is you got to know your spindle MT2 right here and then you know what to get to order and they got a whole buffet of them to pick from maybe you'd like something different than this but they're not a real lot of money and just a light tighten like this it does not slip that's kind of hard to believe but it's really true now the strobing you might see on the display is going to be part of the camera deal here you're going to see stuff like that when you're shooting these uh, anyway I had to show you this this is a uh, over a four inch, four and three eighths hole saw, and you're always burning your tools up and your drill bits up. Well, I love these frequency drives. You can run this so nice and slow. Now another thing is you can put a tap in the chuck and go so far in and hit reverse and run it back out. <clears throat> it's not really made for that, but that does work good too. The wildlife people, the wildlife. Okay, here's your what the normal motor would normally be at 60 cycles a second here for your AC wave. Uh, and of course, you're going with a 3 to 1 ratio on an 1800 motor here. Now, you can set these up to go as fast as you want up to 400. Well, I got this set up where you can go up to basically 140 on the frequency. And as you can see, that thing is just flying. And here's the cool part. You can jam it in reverse. You can program how all this works. Jam it in reverse. And it counts everything down and goes the other direction. Don't go bang or nothing. Really a nice drive. And let's go back to forward. And 
That's how that works. And for as far as stopping, uh, they have uh, brake resistors you can buy for these two. Don't really need that in here when you hit the stop. It stops plenty fast on its own. Uh, one other thing too, if you want a safety switch for your foot on the floor, in case you'd ever want to shut it off with your foot, uh, you can tap wires into here, put a switch down on the floor. On the display, you can have whatever you want up uh, for the display by pushing this button here. And kind of a nice little setup there. And there's your motor RPMs. Just kind of gives you an idea what this will all do. Very, very nice drive. Now to buy a drill press that would be variable speed and with a nice chuck on it and everything, you're, it's going to hit you pretty hard in the wallet. Uh, this setup here for this drive and motor is actually under $300. I thought you might want to know that and if you do wish to purchase, uh, this is what I have here. Don't mean that's what you got to buy, but it'll give you an idea what's making this one here work. And down here on the lathe, I have that extension cable for the panel. Just put a little plate bracket on there. And then the extension cord goes around to the back. So the chip, the drive is way in the back there. Uh, the drive for this, I got a 220, two horse drive, and then a one horsepower motor running this machine here. Uh, works fine for what I do. Uh, and then over here for the mill, I got another display panel and cord comes off it around to the back where I have the drive inside that housing there. And this is the same setup. It's a one horsepower motor uh, with a two horsepower drive uh, that way too. I, I like oversizing the stuff and then I read uh, somewhere too that that's also a recommended thing to do. Then one other thing, on both machines I have these digital panels. Schumatech's the one, they got a web, he's got a website where you can build these yourself and you just buy the plastic overlay in the box. Uh, and then a circuit board, you buy all the parts from Moser Electronics. You got a little over hundred bucks and you got some digital panels. Uh, this machine here, I got the red display. The other one, of course, I had to put the green display in. The displays are going to kind of look goofy with the camcorder, but uh, they're stable as all heck when you're uh, running the machines here. Something else I'd show you. Maybe somewhere down the road I'll produce a video on that stuff too. The nice thing too with these drives on the lathe, you never have to change gears anymore and uh, plenty of power, you can hammer it in reverse, slows down gradually, backs up by itself too. And so just fly. <laughs> well, what sure, would I show you that one in action too? Oh, hey, I got a neat little tech tip for you here too. I got to show you it before we go. Uh, when your drill bits become magnetized, and of course all the shavings and stuff stick to them, that's kind of irritating. Well, there is an answer for that. Let me show you here. Okay, if you have one of these soldering guns like that, you just take your drill bit and you run it through here a couple times, and that'll demagnetize it. And we can go back over by the Drill bit shavings here, and look at that, nothing sticks anymore. Works for screwdrivers too, that's your tech tip for this show. <laughs> well that's some ideas uh, to give you here for this drill press to make yours variable speed. Thought I'd show you, hopefully answering some questions in case you ever had the idea to do that to yours. Thank you for watching, hope to catch you again, bye bye.